is the largest state park of Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, oh no, of Nevada. It's uh, in Overton. They call it also sometimes Moapa Valley. Valley of State Fire. Valley of Fire State Park. Here we go. This is the I-15 North Freeway. Uh, coming from uh, Las Vegas uh, downtown to the Valley of Fire. I also made sure that I captured the road in my bag while I'm driving inside the park and it's amazing to watch as I pass by. This is inside the state park where you can find different kinds of rocks that are unique. They are reddish in color. Of course, I've taken video also of the front row while I'm driving. It's inspiring to watch while I'm on the wheels. The road gets narrower and steeper as I go further. There are roads that suddenly go down then go up but fortunately my car is smooth driving and does not have difficulty in varying roads within a short span of time. The road is more beautiful in person as I compare it to my video. The feeling of driving in these roads is fascinating. So if you are in the area, go check it out. derives its name from red sandstone formations formed from great shifting in sand dunes during the age of dinosaurs 150 million years ago complex uplifting and faulting of the region followed by extensive erosion have created the present landscape other important rock formations include limestones shale and conglomerates Prehistoric users of Valley of Fire included the basket maker people and later the Anasazi Pueblo farmers from the nearby fertile Moabal Valley. The span of approximate occupation has been dated from 300 before Common Era to 1150 Common Era. Their visits probably involved hunting, food gathering, and religious ceremonies, although Scarcity of water would have limited the length of their stay. Fine examples of rocks art left by these Asian peoples can be found at several sites within the park. Winters are mild, wild, winters are mild, mild with temperatures ranging from freezing to the mid 70s. Summer highs usually exceed 100 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, that is 38 degrees Celsius and can reach 120 degrees Fahrenheit, that is 49 degrees Celsius. Temperatures can vary widely from day to night. Average annual rainfall is four inches. 
and coming in the form of light winter showers and summer thunderstorms. Spring and fall are the preferred seasons for visiting Valley of Fire. The area plant community is denominated by widely spaced creosote bush, burro bush, and brittle brush. Several cactus species, including beaver tail, hedgehog, and cholia, are also common. The springtime bloom of such plants are the desert marigold, indigo bush, and desert mallow are often spectacular along park roads. Resident birds include the raven, house finch, sage sparrow, and roadrunner. Many migrant birds are all, also passed through the park. Most desert animals are nocturnal and not frequently seen by the passing motorists. Many species of lizards and snakes are common in the park as well as the coyote, kid fox, black-tailed jackrabbit, spotted skunk, and antelope ground squirrel. The desert tortoise is a rare species and is protected by state law. If you are lucky enough to come to come across one, please leave this likable and harmless creature to live a life in peace in its own environment. You know that if uh, it is a state park, you are not supposed to get anything that is in the park, regardless if it's a plant, especially if it's an animal, or most especially if it's a rare species. Remember that do not take anything inside the park, the state park. There are a lot of park features like the beehives, which is the unusual sandstone formations eroded by wind and water. Campground, arch rock is the more primitive arch rock. Uh, there's campground, petrified logs, mouse's tank, rainbow vista, fire canyon, silica dome, fire wave, white domes, which I tried to do the hike, uh, but it was raining and it's getting dark and I have to drive back to uh, downtown Vegas, so I, I didn't make it. The Seven Sisters, which is the fascinating red rock formations, are easily accessible from the road. Cabins, also. There's also called the Elephant Rock. There's the visitor's um, center. Let's check it out. The visitor center provides exhibits on the geology, ecology, prehistory, and history of the park and the nearby region. As stated on the park's website, it is strongly recommended that each visitor makes this an early stop after entering the park. The visitor center is open daily from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The park closes at sunset. An entrance fee is charged per vehicle upon entering the park. This fee is collected at the fee booth. Additional fees are charged for the use of camping areas and is payable at the campgrounds. Hiking is available to visitors. The visitor center has the information for hiking because of varying weather.
might be poison ivy. I don't have any idea about plants, so I don't want to touch any plants. If you see, I'm out on top. Oof. Let me. Oh my gosh, I, I hope I'm not gonna fall. Look. Ow, ow, ow. like it here? Yeah. You like the view? It's a great place. Oh, that is nice. You like nature. That is nice. This is the white domes area and it's a cliff the road to go into this uh, hiking area is very steep um you saw earlier a part of the road and um i'm having a hard time walking with my hiking boots in the sand it's so heavy because the the my boots really like it's uh, on the ground and i'm having a hard time maybe i'm tired at the by this time uh, the White Domes is a sandstone formation with brilliant uh, contrasting um, colors. It's a picnic area also. So you see there, I was talking with a child earlier and a 1.25 mile scen uh, scenic trail with a slat canyon. And it's a 20 minute drive from the visitor center. Check it out also this area. What kind of car is that? Tesla. It's the Model X. With Falcon Wing doors. I'm sorry? Falcon Wing doors. I still didn't hear you. I said Falcon Wing doors. Falcon Wing. The doors are Falcon Wing. That's neat. <laughs> yeah. Wow. If you don't want to fly, you drive, and I choose Tesla. <laughs>